It's Webisode 5 of the Remember That Time When series, and we are back on the road heading to Georgia. Tybee Island, to be exact, where we learn some history and, of course, visit the beach. Okay, we're on to the backup plan. In 300 meters, turn left on Polk Street, then take the second right. And I'm not convinced. I'm a little unsure of what the nav lady is taking yeah. us to. Well, there's an RV park sign on the nav. Okay, maybe she's right. Oh, there's a... <laughs> He's probably going to get our spot. This is the guy who has a better nav system. No kidding. the Tybee Island Lighthouse. Now apparently it is the oldest lighthouse in Georgia and it's 154 feet tall which seems pretty darn tall to me. Now I can't tell you exactly how old it is but there is a museum here that you can go in and check out all of those things. These are original buildings. Now I think for right now the lighthouse is getting some restoration and maintenance done. Uh, so you can't go in it, but otherwise I think normally you can. So if you're here, you should check those things out. And uh, yeah, if you want to climb to the top of the Tybee Island Lighthouse, apparently there is a great view of the entire island. We're not going to do that. 
this is insane. So this sign is telling us what the storm surge would be in the different categories of hurricanes that come through here. Now, there's been a lot of hurricanes come through here over the years, but even in recent years, but I bet you they've had for sure a four and maybe a five. And that is just the simple storm surge from the ocean. Like everything would be underwater, right? It's this whole area is flat. Yeah. So that would be more than one story uh -huh. underwater. 11 to 15 feet of water. That's almost two stories. And imagine the force it's coming with too. It's not like it's just rising water. It's coming with force and wind and waves. These people that live in these areas are strong beyond anything that I could imagine. Be wow. scary. That, that is scary. scary. And I wonder how long it takes for the water to get to that level yeah. or if it just comes in a big rush. Yeah. If any of you out there have lived through this kind of stuff, I just, I feel for you because this is crazy amount of water. That would be over the top of the beaver. Yeah. If it was parked right here. Yeah. Wow. Pretty intense, eh? Yeah. Looks like they've carpeted the town. This Tybee Pavilion here was actually built back in 1891 by the Georgia Railroad. So we got to figure that out a little more because there's somehow the railroad is tied into this island historically. Anyways, it burned down in 1967 and then they rebuilt this new one uh, in I think around 96. It's a really big pavilion and it's right up there on the edge of the beach, the level that the storm surges would be on this, uh, maybe like three or four, the hurricane winds that would hit this and yet it still stays standing. <laughs> so, you know, it's an incredible piece of architecture, really. So it was also, the whole area, the Tybee Island area was a real uh, place to be back in the early 1900s for day trippers and vacationers. It was sort of considered the U.S.'s South Atlantic resort destination. So, and I mean, it is still a resort destination. There's hotels and bars and food all over this place. Luckily, it's just not too crowded today when we're here. It's not quite the in season yet, but it's still nice. As we continue our tour and investigation here of Tybee Island, we've learned that it was actually incorporated in 1887, but that still doesn't say exactly how old the actual lighthouse is, so we'll still work on that. So we're on the main strip in Tybee Island, and uh, Denise goes, oh, there's Ben and Jerry's. I said, I've never had Ben and Jerry's. So I know why now. I mean, it's good, but this isn't really licked down, and this was $5.50 <laughs> US, so that's about $8 Canadian for a tiny dollop right. of ice cream. In the shoe schlock for eight yeah. bucks? I well, you would, even imagine. You, you would get, get a bin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the shoe shop for your ice cream. Yes, people. do. Continuing on with our investigative reporting here on Tybee Island, <laughs> we finally found, thanks to Google, that this lighthouse was actually built in around 1736 and one is one of the last standing colonial era lighthouses. So that's pretty cool. Now they did a whole revamp of it and everything in the 1800s. 
So we found that the lighthouse is actually on the property of Fort Screven, and then we had to figure out what Fort Screven was all about. So this was a fort um, that was built back in the early 1800s to protect the entrance to the Savannah River. So it was built to uh, for the American Spanish War, and it was manned during World War One and Two. So it's this. This is just part of it. This is Battery Brumby, and it is one of m multiple batteries that were used. Uh, but it was the first one that was finished, and it actually housed uh, four eight-inch guns that could shoot a 200-pound shell up to eight miles out there. <laughs> so it was pretty significant building and was used uh, for many years, but then these days, they've actually got a hotel in there, there's a museum, um, it, it's got all sorts of cool things. But I suggest you come by and take a look because there's lots of history here, and these buildings are still standing, and there are other ones dotted around the area that would be very cool to take a look at as well. Also today, this site is used as a safe haven during storms so if you're on the island and you don't have a house to go back to or something like that and a storm's rolling in this is one of four places on the island that you could go to for uh, safety and security during the storm so it just seems like it just keeps getting used for important things <laughs> We learned so much and love how bike-friendly Tybee Island is. Next stop? Meh, I don't know. Somewhere around Savannah. Let's go. <laughs>